It's so exciting to see people here. We have a couple, maybe a few more than a couple. And for those of, us, those of you guys that are joining us online, gals, it's, it's amazing to me. You, you think a study is gonna be one thing and the size it's gonna be, and you kind of have this in your mind. And then the Lord just continues to do what he wants to do, which is ultimately what we want. So I wanna welcome those of you who are here with us in the building, and then also the hundreds of women that are watching us online right now, and then joining their own small groups. We have more small, we have actually almost twice as many women online and doing small groups with us as we have here. So it's just so exciting to see. And I know this Bible study book is beautiful. Drew Fuller did an amazing, beautiful job. But what I love is that as beautiful as this book is, what we get to do, what we get to study is even more beautiful than that. So how cool that the design and all the things that go into that is just a really, uh, uh, just a reflection really, I think of what the Lord gives us in his word. So I am just so excited to have you guys here. It's the first time we've got to have a women's group together where everybody's, at least some of us have been together and those of you guys online, it's just really an exciting thing to do. So I'm really excited. Today is gonna be just a little bit of an introduction, okay? I have given myself just not a super long time, so we'll see how I do. Um, but we're just gonna kind of walk through a little bit, give you guys just a snippet of, inter, uh, of an introduction for Psalm 119. Some of you guys may have studied this before, and for some of you, this might be your first time. So I wanna give you guys just kind of some general observations. Some of this stuff, you're gonna find pieces of it in your um, first part of your study guide. You could take notes in there, or you can you know, just listen, do whatever you want. But just a couple general observations about Psalm 119 and what we're gonna study. First, who is it written by? This is a, a lot of the old school scholars seem to think that this was a Psalm of David. And they even talked about how um, David would teach his uh, sons the Hebrew alphabet. And we'll talk about the structure here in a second through by using Psalm 119. But then later scholars would kind of lean more towards Ezra, that maybe Ezra wrote this. And some of the language is very similar that, that we would find in like uh, yeah, Ezra and Chronicles. And so they thought, oh, maybe it's Ezra. The cool thing, it doesn't really matter. The Lord did not put David's name in here. He did not put Ezra's name in here. So it doesn't really matter who wrote it. We get to study all that it is. And that is just a great little fun fact of it. The cool stuff was Psalm 119. Okay, so it's huge, right guys? If you've never read it before, you're going to learn it's the longest chapter in all of the Bible. It has a very common theme throughout the, uh, throughout the entire chapter. And we'll talk about some of those key words that are in there. But the way it's structured is really unique. It's very perfect even in it, right? It goes, it's an acrostic, so it's representing the Hebrew alphabet. And so if you see in your Bible, there's kind of some funky word that's up every eight verses. That's, that's the Hebrew letter that it's representing there. And it was kind of a memorization tool for scripture that the, that the Jewish children would probably learn that way. But it's 22 sections, one for every letter in the Hebrew alphabet, eight verses long. It just has some nice structure to it, but it's pretty unique in scripture. And like I said, it's long. It's right in the middle of your Bible. You can't really tell in mine because I've got all the big notes in the back and stuff, but if you were to open your Bible, it's probably gonna fall pretty close to being right there in Psalm 119. So what did the Lord spend so much time doing all the longest chapter in the word right in the middle of his word and telling us over and over and over a really common theme about the word of God. I am guessing he wants us to get something here. I'm guessing this is a little important. He's gonna repeat this. It's in the center of scripture and he's gonna talk about the word over and over. I wanna read this quote that Charles Spurgeon had because as we've talked about somewhat the repetition of the theme, there's more to it. Charles Spurgeon said, this wonderful Psalm is charmingly varied from beginning to end. Its variety is that of a kaleidoscope. From a few objects, a boundless variation is produced. In the kaleidoscope, you look once and there is a strangely beautiful form. You shift the glass of very little and another shape equally delicate and beautiful is before your eyes. What I love about that quote is because if you have read Psalm 119, you know you're gonna see this, this common thread of the word, the word, the word, 
different ways of saying the word over and over. And so much has been written about this psalm. I mean, people go crazy about this psalm. There's a Puritan preacher that wrote 1,600 pages about one chapter in the Bible. He would use, multi, he would use more than one chapter just to talk about a single verse. You can't do that without this depth and the richness that is in Psalm 119 of all the differences. I think of it like this kaleidoscope. You just shift it just a little bit and the Lord's gonna reveal a different form, something that's even more beautiful within it. And I think that is really cool. Um, Matthew Henry is one of my favorite commentaries and he used to give this to his kids and he would uh, give them a, a verse from Psalm 119 every day to meditate on. And then that way, as they went through the year, they would have gone through Psalm 119 two times. And he did that their whole growing up years. I thought that was kind of a cool thing. We might have to try that, see if my kids are on board with that one. But it's a Psalm that is so much has been written about. And what is it that they're writing about over and over? Well, in, on page four, I started writing out some of these words because we're gonna see all kinds of different words that we hit on for the word of God. And I've written some of the, those definitions, but then I wanted to expound on some of those definitions because I think it helps us to kind of shift that kaleidoscope a little bit as you're studying and you can refer back to these definitions and see what the context of that looks like. So the first one we're gonna see is the law. Pretty basic. The law is the instruction to teach, to direct. And you see that one, I, I, I was gonna try to tell you all the times that they're in there, but it's just a bunch of numbers and that would get really boring. But the law is in there and you see it right off the bat. You see Psalm in uh, verse one, it talks about the law. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. So there's our first one, real basic. The next one is gonna be testimonies. You're gonna see testimonies. Little bit of different nuance here. This one is gonna have almost like that um, courtroom witness feel to it. it. There's a solemn oath that's represented in this word for the word. And it has, uh, it's talking in relation to the relationship of the Lord with his people too, which I think is kind of a cool thing. Again, I think these will just color and shift your kaleidoscope a little bit as you're studying this. The next one is precepts. Precepts, think details with this one. This is like the overseer. This is the, um, all the details, kind of setting your boundaries. And that's what the precepts is referring to. The next one is statutes. And the statutes are, I loved this one because I can actually, every time I say this word now, I, I picture this inscribed, engraved, like written on us. But there's an authority to this, like as in a lasting quality. When you think of something that is inscribed or engraved, it just doesn't go away. And I loved that about this one. You see the statutes in verse five when it says, oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. Commandments. So what are we on? We're on like the fourth one. Fourth one, fifth one? Commandments, pretty basic, authority. Your right to give orders. You're gonna see that as the word all the time. And our commandments, it talks about in verse six, then I shall not be put to shame having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. The next one is rules and also judgments I put here because depending on your translation, it's sometimes it's gonna pop up as judgments and sometimes it's gonna so, show rules, but it's the same Hebrew word that they used. Um, you see it in verse seven, uh, I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous judgments. And I do, you picture the judge piece there, the discerning the right and wrong and, and that with that word. So we got six of those right there. Your last one is the one you're gonna probably see the most and that's just the word, what God has spoken. But all of these are just different ways of articulating the Lord's written word, his written revelation to us through his word. What I loved about word is I think the reason you'll see that one a little bit more than you're gonna see the others is it's actually two Hebrew words, but they mean basically the same thing. They mean the spoken word, but the Hebrews would use two different words for that. But what I thought was interesting is you look through all of those, and I told you I'm not gonna bore you with a bunch of numbers, but all of them, they're interspersed pretty evenly. One word's gonna be there 21 times, one's 23, one's 19, one's 20, but they're all right in this range kind of just sprinkled out there. 
I think the Lord wants us to see all the dimensions of his, of his word in this way. And I love that they might be slight differences, but I think as you start studying this, you're gonna see how that might have a different implication for you based on some of the meaning of that word. So that's why I took the time to define some of those. But all of those numbers that they add up to, you got the word of God in there 178 times in 176 verses. That's a lot. I feel as a mom, you know, when you're telling your kids something and you feel like you've said it 178 times, the Lord's saying, my word is important. My word is perfect. My word is steady. My, uh, all of these things in these 176 verses. But I think he's making a point. So I want to give it the worth that it deserves. And I wanna say, yes, we want to study this and see how this all works. So who is Psalm 119 for? Because I think it can, because of its structure, and if you, at your first glance, and it's gonna feel like the repetition, you're, you're gonna go, huh, what, what's in this for me? When I first studied Psalm 119, I was in a pretty difficult season of life. It was like 10, 12 years ago, and I was having, it was just, it was a low point. And I remember calling Patty Arugio, who helped write this study with me, and she was my kid's preschool teacher. And if you've never met teacher Patty, she's lovely. And I reached out to her to meet with me for a little bit and just kind of on a regular basis. And when you go meet with teacher Patty, you go into her preschool room and she takes you down to the little tables and you go sit in the little chairs and you sit there. And I remember the first time I went in there and I sat in my little preschool chair and she said, you know, I've been praying about this and there's two things that the Lord really put on my heart for you as what we would, what we would do. And the first one she said is, I want to be praying Psalm 23 with, for you. And that's a powerful Psalm in of itself. And when you switch that to be a prayer, really cool. So she was praying Psalm 23 for me. And then the second one that she said is she said, I want us to study Psalm 119 together. And I remember when she first said that, that didn't pop out to me as like, oh, this is like the comforting and all of the things that I thought I was looking for at the time. But isn't it great how the Lord knows us so well, he created us and he knows exactly what is gonna be the thing that we're gonna need. And for me, just on the outset, when you're in that season and you're in just kind of in a rough spot, life feels super messy. You know, it, 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 you don't have a lot of maybe even structure to your day. Everything just feels kind of out of whack. But Psalm 119, just the structure of it, man, even in the inspired way it's written in the acrostic, 22 sections, eight verses, there is such order to it. There's a steadiness to it. And for me, I found like when I'm in my messy season of life, even that spoke to me. So if the grammatical structure and however, you know, the Lord chose to do that, if that was just right there gonna meet me, I knew that there was gonna be more that Psalm 119 was gonna do. And how amazing that the Lord would be to plant that seed, you know, 10, 12 years ago, whenever that was, and then bring us to today where we're, we're gonna do a whole Bible study just on Psalm 119. And I think I'm even like more nerdy excited about 119 even now, so. But there's so many things that you get from Psalm 119. I'm gonna highlight just a couple things because if you weren't excited when you came, you're gonna be now. So the perfection that we're gonna see, perfection of God, not our perfection, but the perfection of God who created all of these words for us. Verse seven says, the law of the Lord is perfect, reviving the soul. When I was in that down season, you want, you're wanting your soul to be revived. And what is the thing that does that? The perfect, the law of the Lord is perfect. Comfort, right? It's comforting. Verse 50 is one of my favorites. It says, this is my comfort in my affliction that your promise gives me life. We all need that. <laughs> strength. Does anybody need any strength right now? Verse 28 says, my soul melts away for sorrow. Strengthen me according to your word. We can find actual strength from these words. Wisdom, I love that one. Verse 130, and these are all over. I'm just picking a few. The unfolding of your word gives light and it imparts understanding to the simple. Boy, I really camped out a lot on that one this week because it sure feels like it's awfully dark out there right now. 
And then when I think about that we get to spend eight weeks looking at this with a promise like that of the unfolding of your words gives life, gives light. It imparts understanding to the simple. I can use some understanding and we could, I could sure use some light. It also does hope. There's so much hope in just sitting in these words. There's lots of themes in here. But I wanted to bring up this quote because here's one of them that is an easy one. It's actually the very first word, but it says, blessed, you'll be happy if you follow the law of the Lord. You'll be happy. And I loved this quote that says, the reason we are not happy is that we sin. And the main reason we sin is that we do not know our Bibles well enough. I wanna take that challenge right there because we are a sinful, broken world. But the things we get to see in Psalm 119, we get to see all of the things that will keep us from sin. Psalm 119, 11 says, I have stored up my word in your heart, in my heart, that I may not sin against you. There is so many things that we kind of will remind ourselves, like a checklist. I need to remember to do this, remember to do this. We need to remember to do this. We need to remember to be in the word. Storing those things in our, in our heart. Remembering those things. And this just gets to be an invitation to do this in a little more structured way. And I love that. I, another verse that popped out to me as I was kind of looking at this introduction of some of the things that we'll see. Because what is a distraction? What is the things that if we're not here, if we're not doing this, and we're not in God's word, there's a lot of other things that we might be, at, at, might be looking at. And verse 37, oh, I just backed it up. Sorry about that. But verse 37 says, I'm gonna have to look it up because I flipped past it, guys, sorry. Verse 37 in Psalm says, turn my eyes from looking at worthless things and give me life in your ways. It was a very convicting passage to me because you think about all the things that you look at that the, it tells us is worthless. And here we have something of great worth that we get to focus on, that we get to spend time in, that we get to study. 176 verses. You're not gonna get bored. You might think, how can you keep talking about the word 176 times, 178 times? But that's just how good the Lord is in the perfection and the steadiness of his word. And I think particularly right now when it's just, it's, it's just all kinds of messy, this is just an even better time to be pointed towards this, to be looking at what we have here. So I wanna point out how this study is going to work, okay? So the first thing I wanted to mention, as you can tell, I'm quite impassioned about this part, but we at Athe, women want to be women devoted to the word. And I hope y'all see my heart that that is not a tagline to me. I am so, I feel so strongly that I want us to be women that are so submitted and absolutely about the words in this book. And so to do that, we wanna spend some time. We wanna dig into this. So it is eight weeks, but to be fair, it's actually only six with the homework. I love Bible studies that have like, you know, tons of questions and all that stuff, that's super great. This one's not like that, guys. If you flip through it, it's pretty basic. And so you can kind of do with it with what your time is. Because the second thing I want to ask you is that to keep in mind, we are all in very different places. Some of you guys might be able to dig in and put an hour into this Bible study. And some of you might be lucky if you hit 15 minutes that day. And then some of you might go, oh, I missed a day. It's okay. Still come. No one's grading. I want you guys to come. If you didn't get a single thing written in your notebook, you just got to read, you get to come and sit and be prayed for, and you get to hear the word, that's good. That's what we want. Because we need that. And we need, we need it anytime, but I feel like right now we need it even, even more. Your virtual groups, the same thing, guys. Click in. Even if you didn't get to a single thing in your study, keep doing it. Keep plugging it in. And realize you need to go at the pace of the season the Lord's called you to. 
Don't worry about what somebody else has been called to and the fact that they're you know, writing a novel in their study guide. It's no big deal, okay? But the thing I loved about how this study came together is these questions are gonna bring you into the full counsel of God's word. You're gonna spend tons of time in Psalm 119 for sure, but you're gonna go all over. And I think that's so important for us to be able to look at all of it and let all of that feed what we need right now. Quick little thing about this little book. This little, I don't even know what to call this. Are we calling this like the scripture booklet or something? So if you've never heard me speak before, you might not know that I am like a really crazy Bible marker. I take my Bible marking really seriously. But some of us don't wanna write in our really pretty Bible. Well, mine's still all kinds of written in. So we did this because this is just the text of Psalm 119. And what I really am hoping you will do is get messy in this book right here, okay? Write in it. You might circle something, draw a line to the side and have a question about it. it. You might read something and it makes you think of someone that you can pray for, write their name in it. This in itself will be such a beautiful accompaniment to what you write in your study that you can look back on and see what you're doing. When I first started studying it this way, I got really um, just super excited about circling all of the action words and I circled all the verbs that pertained to an action I was being called to do and then I did it in a different color for all the action words of things that the Lord does. Okay, it might just be coloring, but it like, it shifted that kaleidoscope. <laughs> You know, it shifts that kaleidoscope just a little bit and you see something different. And the great thing in that particular example is I kept seeing all the gracious ways that the Lord meets us and he doesn't ask that much of us. So I love that. So that's what this is for. Go crazy with that. It's just all kinds of awesome. I just love that. Okay, the last, well, there's two more things, but one thing to remember is just a little bit of a warning because you need to armor up and be prepared to be distracted. I guarantee you, your phone is gonna text, your child is gonna wake up from a nap, and the FedEx guy is gonna come all at the same time right when you sit down to do this. The circumstances might not always be perfect for when you are able to do your study, but know you're gonna get distracted because here's the thing, the enemy absolutely does not want you to spend time in this. He does not want you to know the God that loves you so much he'd much rather you're looking at those worthless things over there. And going in with being women devoted to the word, was there ever a time that we needed to be more devoted to the word? So dig into this, but be prepared. You're gonna get distracted. So just don't get shocked. It's gonna happen. It's all good. Find a different time, but persevere through it because you're gonna be so blessed at what you find in all of this. The final thing I wanna look at, because this is, I think, the secret to our success in this study right here, and that is to pray these words. Psalm 119, 18. Pray that the Lord would open our eyes and behold the wondrous things out of your law. That's what we need. You don't need a big, heavy commentary. You don't need all the great Bible study tools in the world. You don't need any of that. You need to, every time before you sit with the Lord, you need to ask him to open your eyes that you can see all the wondrous things in this kaleidoscope that he has for you. Let's pray. Lord, we are so excited to do this. Thank you for creating the opportunity that we can um, gather even virtually all the ways that you've allowed for us to do this. But Lord, I pray this for us. Would you open our eyes, Lord, and show us the wondrous things that you have in your word? I know, Lord, that you have specific things for each woman that logs on, every woman that walks in these doors. Your word is living and active. It's sharper than any two-edged sword. And so, Lord, we just pray that we would come to your word submitted to it. Let it change us. I pray that the lens that we would see it through is only through the lens that you desire, not through the lens of the worthless things of the world, but through your lens. So open our eyes, Lord, to the things that you have for us. In Jesus' name, amen.